Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, Jamie Setley here. It is March 10th, 2017. And this is the Charting the Markets Friday webinar. Greta, Chris, how uh, is everyone doing? Please let me know that you can hear me and that you can see uh, the charts. Pooja says everything's good. Pooja, you already probably have a pretty good idea of some of the levels and stuff that we're looking at. Um, this webinar, just for the most part, like to go through some of the uh, bigger picture levels, right, that I'm paying attention to and just take stock of uh, what what the weeklies and dailies kind of look like, right? Sometimes we'll dive into some shorter term stuff um, and then take questions. Okay, so let's just start with... Uh, with Euro, if we zoom in on the weekly candles, it's really not looking too bad down here, is it? For a bottom, like a really big bottom. Um, and this this line underneath price, <clears throat> we're looking at the uh, parallel that goes back to the 1980 high. Okay, so really long-term stuff. And I did a video on it yesterday on Euro, but and you can find it on Daily FX. Um, but essentially, you know, the uh, the drop that we had in late December, early January, really does, you know, it kind of has all the ingredients I think you'd need for a big trap, right? So. Uh, the trap being a bear trap because everyone would get bearish down here, create a big short position, which you know helps propel price higher as it gets unwound on the way up. So that's just what I'm seeing from the chart technically. Um, you know, I, I know that a lot of people probably take issue with this on a fundamental basis. People talk about the Fed raising rates and blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, um, you know, the it's not interest rates alone in the U.S. It's the interest rate differential. It's the spread. Okay, and we can chart that too. And I did look at a chart yesterday. Um, see it here. chart that we had brought up or that we showed is the uh, 10 year spread between US treasuries and German 10 year right and this is that spread so as it goes higher to, this is uh, US minus German so it's uh, in favor of, of US on the way up well just like euro it the spread topped back in um, very late December, early January, right? And since then, you've got a leg down, a leg up. Could be just the first two legs of the next down cycle, just like the euro dollar um, move higher. Could be the first two legs of a new cycle up, right? Now, FOMC next week, obviously, all eyes on that, uh, of course, and it's, you know, it's not, it's 100% right baked in that, that, that they're going to raise rates. Uh, it's not really a, much of a question. Um, so, you know, if they didn't, I mean, I can't imagine what the dollar would do, It'd absolutely tank. But it's really what she says, right, what the communication is. That'll be the big deal. Um, so on the chart. We're holding support. Can you uh, discount another spike down here? Maybe a test of 104.60, which would be the low from March of 2015. Uh, no, I don't think you could discount that. That's you know certainly a possibility. Um, but bigger picture, this looks fairly constructive to me for a bigger low. And don't forget, you do have big time divergence down here on a weekly and a monthly basis, by the way. 
Here's the monthly chart. Monthly divergence was down here at the lows, and you might say, well, this is not divergence because you did not make a new price level. Actually, you did uh, because it's based on closing prices, right? And so here, you had a new closing month back in 2001 in May, and that's very important when you were looking at um, when you're looking at RSI, okay, it's important to look at it if you're if you're doing di for you know divergence, for example, if you're looking for divergence or you think you spot divergence, it's important to look at it on a closing basis because RSI does not know what the price highs and lows are. The formula uh, formula for RSI only uses the closes, okay, so you have to look at the closes. So this would be divergence down here. Actually, this was uh, the chart that I put in the weekly last week, and I got some emails saying, uh, you know, that's not divergence. You don't have a price low. Actually, you do, okay? So that's important. And you can see here the monthly basis, uh, monthly low. It was just, uh, you know, December 2016 close, uh, 105.16 just barely below the close of 105.63 from November 2015. Okay, so we'll move on. I'm Constructive Euro. Uh, I'm looking for it to uh, absolutely scream higher, but wouldn't want to fight it if uh, you weren't holding the low from early this year, first you know month of the year, first day of the year low is big time and if you don't hold that then this parallel comes into play again and it's down uh below 102 so don't be stubborn all right uh let's take a look at cable i see some questions on dollar cad i will certainly get to dollar cad so cable the big consolidation since the crash in October. Um, we're essentially down at, so if you draw, and this is, uh, the, the Euro chart I was looking at was log scale, but if you look at, <clears throat> the cable chart actually charts better, at least from the high in 2000 and, uh, set, or 2014, excuse me, it actually charts better with uh, arithmetic scale, not log scale. So that's why I'm looking at the channel the way I am and just draw a trend line from the uh, 2014 high to the 2015 high. And that's that gets you your parallels. OK, that's the angle that the market does seem to be trading on. And you can see that lower parallels, just you know, lines extended to make lower channel boundaries. Each time we've gotten down there. Right except for a period back in October when we crashed, um, but did regain it, came back, tested it again in January, and we're getting really close again. So these channel lines, for uh, for me, I'm looking at them as, as support levels, okay? Um, looking at these as support levels, and yes, they are down, they're what we call downtrend supports, but they're still supports. Right, so you'd want to sell a downtrend on downtrend resistance and buy an uptrend on uptrend support. But look, in this case, we're talking about uh, a very long-term move lower, and certainly the potential to uh, get a really big reversal. Um, so I'm paying very close attention to these support lines. It's still a little lower, right? Um, you know, down. Uh, 50, uh, 80 pips or so lower. So we're very close. <clears throat> Another thing that I thought was interesting, looking at the uh, really long-term stuff. So what do you see here from 2007? Three down, back from uh, 1992. Three down. They actually, in is in as far as time is concerned, they're actually pretty similar. So that move was 105 months. OK, 
okay? This move is 107 months so far. So we've got a, um, this is a bigger drop, okay? This is almost 44%, this was 32%, but you do have uh, this sequence, uh, this box of time that, you know, you've been in this uh, prolonged downtrend in cable. So we may be in for a change. <clears throat> Aussie, so the big picture chart, I love looking at these weeklies because it uh, tells you what's important. And the important thing to know here, folks, is that Aussie is coming off of big resistance, okay? It spent basically all of February, if you remember, up at resistance, trying to break through, trying to punch through resistance. It never could. And uh, since then, it's come off fairly sharply over two weeks. And, uh, you know, support levels that you could see, I mean, the obvious one is 7380. Um, it's the highs back here, okay, from 2015, October, December. Uh, there are some levels before then that we're looking at. Uh, we're in a short trade and have been since Monday, but we're looking to get out a little bit lower. You know, if you look at the short term chart, so Pooja here, um, she knows what's going down here, but if we look at the short-term chart with hold on, with um, with Aussie, okay, let's go to four-hour. I want to go to a six. Yeah, four hours, good. Okay, so a four-hour chart. What we've got. This is we're working off of this trend line. Okay, and you can see that you did find support down here. We had warned about that. So you, you are riding this solid, uh, you know, channel lower at the, at the time, at the moment. And what you want to do is see if there's angles within this that, uh, or parallels within this, on this angle, I should say, that do provide method for entry and we actually hit one just now so i mean if you're already in a short position it's nice to know that you do have um you know that you do have a good resistance so you know if you're looking at a new trade this would be an area where you'd want to do it okay and you can see how it, how i did that all you're doing is looking at where the market's trading you know, which angle it was support back here. Well, it just became resistance this morning. So that's a good sign. Okay. For a, for a bear, like a short term bear. So who knows? It may be that this ends up uh, providing support for the ultimate, uh, the ultimate long entry. Okay. Obviously we look at bigger picture stuff, but we can look at the short term stuff too, to help us really, really get into, uh, you know, a precise, precise entry. So Pooja, Aussie's still looking good on the short side, and I'm gonna, you know, continue to like it. Uh, essentially, below here, but you know, you could allow for even a move up into this parallel, which would be up near 75.80, okay, if it were to happen at some point next week. But yeah, the downtrend on the near term is still intact, and we should be looking at. Uh, short-term downside. Another thing here, a um, little thing with RSI. So if we look at RSI on the four-hour chart, so you see how RSI has been probing the oversold area, the 30 area. And its rallies, including the one this morning, stopped at 50. That's a uh, it's a bearish characteristic on a short-term chart. It's a bear it's a bearish characteristic on any chart, but we're looking at a short-term chart, so it's a bearish characteristic here. Just like when you were heading higher, you were getting overbought, and then you were holding 
um, 40 at, at 50 earlier. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what we've got with uh, with Aussie. Got a question here from uh, Ani Elisa asking, how do you see it for the medium and long term? So you're talking about Aussie, I'm assuming. Uh, well, we've got some pretty good ideas on the long term cycles, I think. Um, but until you take out support or resistance, it's tough to be, you know, uber bullish. Uh, Aussie, at least on a, you can be bullish, but it's hard to be long, right? Because you can't discount more range trade. Oh, Ani's asking about dollar rand. Yeah, I'll get to that. I want to go through some of the majors that we're looking at, and then we will take a take a look at uh, the questions, including dollar rand. All right. So with uh, Kiwi, this is your Kiwi chart. My Main question that I have for Kiwi is the rally here from August 2015. Is this a new uptrend or is this just a bounce within a broad downtrend? And you know, if you look at the long term chart of Kiwi, you can see that the channel is still a lot lower. So it would take some, uh, I don't know, some crazy things for you would think for Kiwi to drop a thousand pips, especially since we're not seeing that type of stuff um, in some of the other crosses, dollar crosses. But look, entertain any sort of possibility. You've also got the fact that the um, the fork, long-term bearish fork, is still doing its thing, right? We had the 25 line, quartile line, whatever you want to call it. There's been resistance ever since September of last year. We got really bearish on Kiwi up here. Um, but therein lies the difference between opinion and trading. We were really bearish. I got stopped out literally right on the high up here. Kind of been chasing it lower since. But I did have a – so, yeah, whatever. Uh, but levels where you could maybe get a bounce, watch the median line, watch the trend line. It's a little bit lower. Uh, a little bit lower. Not quite uh, to 170 pips lower. So, you could still get some good downside in Kiwi, um, as with Aussie, right? Dollar Yen. Great channel on the upside. Big outside week. Follow through. Seems like it should be super bullish, right? Seems that way, but... You got to remember, basically 115 to 116, uh, really big area, okay? Really big area. You know, if we go into a daily, you, know, you got the, this is the 13 week average up here too, basically a quarter, right? A quarter average. And um, that average does tend to act pretty, you know, kind of like a magnet um, at times. And it's support on the way up. It's resistance on the way down. Is it perfect? Of course not. But for the most part, um, you know, it's good to, to follow it. And I like to follow the slope of it. At this point, your slope is dead flat. And that kind of tells you, I think, what you need to know and, and that you don't have a really big uptrend. You don't have a really big downtrend either. You have a sideways trend all right simple stuff but uh very useful so i would approach dollar yen trading uh in that manner right be a buyer at support and a seller at resistance be a you know kind of trade range 
and resistance in this context uh, is we kind of got into it today. So if I go to the daily, move down a little bit, there's nothing complicated about this. You've got barriers essentially you know between 114.90 high up at 115.60 and then the 116 area is really big right we came into today looking to fade a uh, dollar yen spike I was looking to fade 116 didn't get it but there's probably going to be a, a chance to short next week it might not even be a 116 it might be basically right here uh, if we finish the day like this, you can see that you're um, you know, putting in what I would call a fairly bearish candle at the top of a range. Um, so, you know, clean level to trade, trade into or trade against. And that's really all there is to it. Resistance, support. OK, resistance, support. Um, that's how I'm looking at dollar yen. Funny, too, right? It, came in if you were to tell me that uh, yesterday, right, if I had access, like it's like, you remember the movie Trading Places? You ever seen that? Great movie. And they get the, uh, the you know, the orange juice report early. Or was it orange juice? I don't know what it was. I think it was. It was the orange juice report. It'd be like if you had the NFP report early. Right. If you knew that it was going to come out at 235 and the forecast was 200 and you got the Fed next week and this and that, you know, most people would probably be like, oh, man, like I got this info. It says 235 dollars going to rip. And, you know, uh, they'd probably load up and then uh, on the long side of the dollar. And then funny enough, the dollar does the exact opposite thing. So it didn't even do it. It wasn't even able to get the initial spike higher. Right. We're looking for the spike into resistance and then the fade. We didn't even get that. Uh, so not a great reaction. Um, on, you know, NFPs here for the dollar. And I think that might tell you a little bit what you need to know, too, in the short term. OK, dollar cad. We had some peeps asking about dollar cad. <clears throat> Yeah, Chris says, uh, historically, rate hikes tend to be bearish dollar. Uh, well, yeah, not always. The last few, certainly, you know, when they – it's not rate hikes per se. It's when they start the rate hiking cycle that tends to be um, actually towards the end of dollar moves, right? And that's – interest rates are, are a global thing, right? For the most part, throughout history, you've had – the central banks are – you know, economies are going to be more or less in line. Um, and you're starting to see that, you know, come up now, right? You're starting to see the ECB starting to see these rumors coming out about talking about, could they raise interest rates before tapering and this and that and the other. So don't think that this is just a U.S. story. <clears throat> okay. And that, you know, goes back to what I said before about the, um, about the interest rate differentials. Right. And the fact that, the, you know, the chart, let's look at that again. So the interest rate differential is what I always find very fascinating uh, and somewhat um, confusing is when people you because you hear it all the time and you hear it from banks and uh, funds and all kinds of all kinds of research outlets. And they say, well, the interest rate differential for, you know, dollar, you know, is widening against euro. Therefore, euro should continue to decline right it's as if like the interest rate differential is set in stone as if it doesn't move itself it also moves right so what you're you're just what you're doing is you're basically trying to predict one moving object with another moving object you know i mean why don't you just look at the chart of what you're trading okay and so this analysis of the interest rate differential is a bit different because it's kind of anticipatory, right? We're saying that you broke out from a triangle and you have five waves up, therefore the risk is of a reversal lower is real, right? Rather than just saying, well, interest rate differentials have been going up, therefore they're gonna still go up, right? It doesn't work like that. Uh, they could, but they could also reverse. So 
you know, always take, you know, whenever you hear the interest rate differential thing, you know, question it. Uh, okay, great. Interest rate differential has been going this way. That's just, it's just like saying, well, the euro has been going down, therefore it's going to continue to go down. All right, so there's my my rant. Um, getting some good questions here. Our armor in, what's up? Asking about Euro Swiss. Yeah, we'll look at it. I'll look at whatever. Let me get through the majors. Okay, so dollar cad, we've ripped off the lows. Beautiful support. Gosh, I love trend lines. Um, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Come on, look at that. Beautiful. And we are probably going a little higher. Um, not saying you can't pull back some from here. Okay, but on the weekly chart, your resistance is still higher. Uh, and really, it's not until you get through to a new high. Okay, is when you would actually uh, say that you're at a possible topping point. All right, so that's really all you need to know with um, with dollar CAD. Still higher. All right. And that goes hand in hand with oil, which we might as well look at right now. Okay, so crude oil, crude oil. We need to go log chart on this, and we are on log chart. So crude is taking a dive, taking a tumble this week. And where might there be support? So. Just draw a trend line on the lows. That's what I would watch for support. All right. So 47.50s or so. Um, and yeah, watch dollar cad. So those of you that are, you know, looking at dollar cad and trying to short this beast on the near term, might be in for a reprieve if. You know, crude can get down to support and get a bounce. Okay. And if I go back to the dollar CAD chart real quick. So this was the weekly. Go to a 60 minute chart. Let's go to a 60 minute chart. All right. So on the 60 minute chart, is there anything? By the way, look at this chart. This is a line that goes, this is the on, from the weekly chart right there. That was CPI. So if we're looking at this uh, hourly chart, you ask yourself, is there any, are there any interesting slope lines that we could trade off of from here? Well, here to here is going to be too shallow. Here to here, probably too shallow, but is worth a look probably not not a whole lot there to be quite honest with you okay the last thing is this one this one's pretty steep but it is interesting because we hit it this morning I think oh no we didn't you could watch that though okay um, you could watch this. So you can see the parallel here. It actually, I think it, it ran into resistance or pretty close to it. Yeah. So that would be an area to watch for really short term. Um, is essentially the line off the lows down here, which would be in line with the former consolidation lows. Okay, moving on. So you see how that you don't need a lot of indicators on your charts. Yet you people get comfortable with in, with indicators, and don't get me wrong, I'm down for an indicator or two, maybe some RSI, um, maybe you know, maybe some moving averages, right? But other than that, all these indicators are the same thing. They're all based on price right so putting you know 10 of them on your chart doesn't tell you anything you know markets trade on angles they trade in a direction and they trade in up down or sideways um, 
and trend lines and slope analysis can really help you identify which way they're trading and where the good place to buy them in uptrends in and sell them in downtrends, you know. <clears throat> okay, uh, we looked at this. So now I'll get to the questions. Yeah, Pooja saying dollar cat that same month. Yeah, it did. And it's very strange. I don't know why you're right. So here, if I bring this in. So check this out. If I bring that, if I bring in uh, da, 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 the dollar cad. If I bring this in. We'll go to dollar cad. Uh, Go 60 minute chart. So what Pooja is saying is, yeah, on different platforms sometimes you do get uh, some issues. So like we already hit that support. And I think the issue on this one is probably because, and this is, you run into this with FX because it's an over the counter market. So you don't have a centralized exchange, but I'm wondering if the lows are different on the CPI print back here from the 24th, which was two Fridays ago. So 130.42 was the low on this platform on TradeStation, the low on dollar CADs on this trading view platform was, yeah, the low is 130.51. That's actually, I think this is FXCM's feed on this one. So, yeah, you end up with um, a different trend line because you have different prices, okay? So it's just kind of something you got to deal with if you're trading FX or you're trading a market that's not, uh, you know, an exchange market. It's over-the-counter market. All right, so now we'll get into questions. I've got so far questions for uh, Dollar Rand. Euro pound and Euro Swiss, Euro Aussie, so a lot of Euro, a lot of Euro, um, silver and gold. All right. So let's go backwards. We'll start with the metals. So front month silver. Has dropped for nine days. Doesn't happen a lot. Happened back here, uh, or sorry, back here in July of 2015. That was a pretty nice low that formed. Um, and then the only other time on this chart, going back 17 years, that it happened was actually in uh, September of 2008. And that was like a V bottom of sorts. So, that alone interests me, okay, um, nine days straight down. But where's the support we we ask? So support for gold, I think, is still actually a little bit lower. Um, you know, here's a weekly chart of gold. Trend line, this is arithmetic. This is one on the weekly chart that actually does scale better on arithmetic chart rather than log. And the trend line has been resistance. Median uh, line was support for the low in December. The 25 line, interesting because we've seen some minor inflection points in it. 1180 is the obvious area to get to, uh, a low in January. And that's where I think you have support in gold. So we're currently 1200. Today's low is 1194.90. Uh, so we have like 20 bucks lower until I would really be psyched about something on the upside in gold, right? The clients know this chart for gold. This is just a downtrend on the four hour chart and just kind of following it. So resistance up here, you know, support still down here. So even if you want it to be bullish gold, you'd need to wait until uh, you got a move even through here. OK, and then you'd look to identify some sort of an uptrending market um, and trade on that. 
So we don't even have a minor behavior change yet for gold. But silver is really the market that um, silver is really the market that has been the tell for me. So silver we just said that we have nine days down in gold, right? Well, silver, and I, you, some of you probably remember this. Posting this not long ago, we had consecutive ups. We had nine up day, nine up weeks in silver just two weeks ago, and the only other time that had happened was back here, 2006. Okay, dropped straight for a month and then turned up. Um, so yeah, some of these consecutive things, ups and downs, especially on longer term pictures, as far as I'm concerned, they do uh, offer some insight into uh, what the market's doing. You know, with silver, with commodities and stuff, especially with something like silver, these things are blow-offs, right? Market gets real bulled up right into resistance. So if we look at silver daily chart this one you do need to look at a log chart um, we hit perfect resistance back a couple weeks ago okay we've tanked we are at a minor support region based on the slope line here better support is going to be down here and that's going to be on this line as well you can see that's a channel line parallel to this line, okay? And it was resistance uh, back December 15th, FOMC, um, or the 14th, excuse me, before FOMC, and then it was support on the way up. So yeah, good area to watch for a low in silver. <clears throat> Uh, Mir asking if I see a head and shoulders. So this could be a head and shoulders top. Is that what you're saying? Mir? You talking about the topping, pat, the possible top head and shoulders? Yes, September. Uh, September. I'm not sure what you mean by September, but this could be a head and shoulders right here. Like you could have this could be a shoulder, this could be a head, this could be a shoulder, right? But what you got to remember is that a head and shoulders is not a head and shoulders until you break down. So it wouldn't even be a head and shoulders until you broke below um, 1120. All right. If that happened, then gold's probably going to be. Uh, screwed for a while <laughs> but anyway i'm not it's not my base case i'm looking for support at 1180. okay so there's some metals let's look at uh the euro crosses and then we'll look at dollar rand so euro crosses we had questions on da euro pound aussie and swiss euro pound So this is a good example, Mir, of people front running their beloved head, their beloved head and shoulders uh, patterns. And remember back here, it was head and shoulders up the wazoo. People were talking about head and shoulders all day long. And since then, you've had a hell of a run higher. Um, and we just broke resistance today. So for me. Yeah, this is a breakout because you're breaking through resistance and you're coming off of support. Um, so it would be something that is a positive, in my opinion, uh, towards the upper channel lines. Just an uptrend. Okay, supports, resistance.
oh, this is log scale, so it has to be drawn as such, 26 degrees. Let's see, so that's 26 degrees. So you do have a minor, you have an uptrend level here. Okay. But, you know, allowing for a setback, I do like Euro pound higher. Um, Euro Swiss. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to look at price action based on since back post S&B. Okay. Post S&B, um, that was an uptrend, but that broke. Okay, that broke. Downtrend. This, these are the downtrend levels. Let's see if they run into anything good. They do not. So there's your downtrend. This is again on, uh, this is log scale, which is why I'm drawing it like this, right? Because if you take a parallel on log scale, it shouldn't matter here because we're looking at Euro Swiss, which isn't moving at all. But okay, so it looks like that actually might be. Uh, what to look at for Euro Swiss. Okay, 14 degrees, let's see what that, 14. Okay, so that's actually what you wanna look at for Euro Swiss. It seems you have a downtrending channel based on the trend line from the highs. You hit good support on these levels. You've been on it for quite a while. Uh, would be looking higher towards 108.70, 108.60, 108.70, and then 109.15. If you break that level, 109.15, that would actually be an indication that you could be doing something much more significant. Okay. <clears throat> let's, for fun, let's look at the price action back before SMB. Does that Euro Swiss chart make sense? by the way. So let's look at, this is the price action before SMB. I wanna see, so if we were looking at resistance back there, at that point, Yeah, I was going to see if maybe we had parallels that were similar um, to what we have now. Maybe something like this. Yeah, so actually you did. So, okay, so this would be the uh, Euro Swiss before SMB. Do you see how the market was hitting these supports and bouncing? But you notice how the bounce each time was like really, uh, really small. That's, you know, dangerous stuff right there when you get that's that warns of a break coming. So, you know, this was resistance. OK, you hit it this time, but the next bounce didn't even come close. The next bounce was a spike. It was a warning. OK, so let's take that to what we have now. So see what this bounce does here. Okay, we've bounced from uh, from this level, well-defined support. Let's see if it continues higher. If it continues higher into resistance and turns over, all is well. Okay, not a big deal. You know, if, in other words, if it continues up into 108.60 or even 109.10 and then rolls over, fine you'd be looking for that point support again, or even a higher support. If you were to go like this, 
where's my little paintbrush? If you were to go like this, and then you were to turn over at resistance, but then maybe find a higher support, and then get back up here, then you'd be more likely to think that you're going to break out. Okay. But if we turn over here, what you end up with is a lower resistance which increases the risk of a break to the downside. Okay, and if you get a bounce then even a lower resistance, in other words, not on the same angle, but at a lower angle, right, a lowered line, then you would be like, oh crap. And we're gonna go like this, okay? So, just, you know, the price action can tell you um, a lot uh, about the marketplace, okay, and how, how a market is, is behaving. R. R. Marin asking about a channel from the 23rd of January 2015. So this is 2015. Uh, okay, I see what you're saying right here. I mean, there's nowhere, I don't know where you would draw. Oh, actually, funny enough, you, you say that. So guess what? So, okay, so this, remember this trend line? This trend line right here, 13 degrees. That's 13 degrees. This is the also 13, it's the exact same trend line. Funny enough. Lo and behold. So yeah, the trend line off of here is the same as the trend line off the tops, is the same as the trend line if you extend it from the post SMB crash low. So this is actually a fairly interesting chart. And I'm glad that you asked me to look at it. So who knows? Maybe this is a bull and this is a channel corrective correction lower and maybe euro swiss is about to go absolutely bonkers to the upside definitely worth following that though um yeah so good chart i'm gonna make a note to follow that okay uh euro 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 euro, euro. okay ani has been so patient and asking for this good stuff about dollar rand. So we'll get there. Um, this was Euro Kiwi. Euro Kiwi, um, really bullish. Okay. You completed a wet, you have an impulse up, you have a wedge down, A, B, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this thing's going back, first target 50, you know, 850, 159. Uh, eventually, it's probably going up to new highs above 180. All right. So first target here, it's been a screamer. Any sort of pullback would be looking for uh, support. Not really sure where at this point because... It's just kind of getting ahead of itself. You could have a really tight fork to follow on this, actually. So you could follow this. This is where forks come in handy over trend lines is because it can give you uh, kind of exhaustion areas, right? So the upper parallel here, and which is just incredibly steep, right? Oh, what a mess. Oh, the feed, but that's something to look at, okay? Um, your median line would be where you want to look for support at this point, probably. One fifty two seventy five, one fifty two eighty. All right. Euro Aussie and then dollar rand, I swear, okay? Yeah, so Euro uh, Aussie after it took out this low, I thought we might be able to get a uh, 
resistance at 140, which is the um, the median line, didn't happen that way. So you got the good level here. Basically, your median line support again. It's support all you know back here. So watch it for support again. Okay, kind of that that simple. Um, you can see that it would be probably around 140 again is where you'd be looking and your next area of resistance probably up near 148 so 140 148 okay dollar rand so weekly chart we broke resistance or sorry support long term support heading lower um have turned up sharply the last few weeks still within a downtrend but not particularly um strong at this point so if you're going to continue lower your resistance is right up here right near 1350 1355 is where your resistance is for dollar rand okay and you look for resistance there and if it does roll over great the acceleration phase for this in other words when it's really going to crap out on the downside is if you break below this line here which is downtrend support at the moment okay um so i like dollar and lower long term because of this trend line break but 1350.55 is where you need to find resistance, I think, in order to stay uh, bearish. <clears throat> and, you know, you want to press the issue on the downside probably once you break through this level. So, again, that is your, you know, you get down through here. Maybe it's resistance, but then that's how it really gets going. Okay. Alrighty. So I think I've got it uh, gotten it all taken care of as far as the questions are concerned. Mir says, how would you trade currencies that break the trend line? Do you wait for a pullback to the trend line? Um well like everyone's different. I you know, I like to buy uh, supports and sell resistance levels. But yeah, in the case of like Euro pound, so we'll use Euro pound as an example because okay, so here's the log chart. We use Euro pound as an example because it's it's exactly what you're asking about. So again, I have us at a level that we could maybe pause at. Um, however, things you got to remember is that there's always support and resistance on all time frames, right? So in this case, see if you can get a good channel to work with. Okay. This is an hourly chart. So if you've confirmed your uptrend or whatever, then yeah, look for a pullback to buy, you know, look to buy the support. So you've broken resistance. This is your resistance. If you retest it, great. If you retest it with a new support line, even greater. And that's where you'd be looking at. I wouldn't want to buy it here personally because you're into resistance now. And it's a very steep advance, and at this point, you would just be chasing. Um, and sometimes that can work out, but I don't think it's a good practice. So, Mir, does that uh, does that help you out? Don't forget, you can go down in time frames to look at levels that could provide support and resistance within the broader move. And um, if the broader move is still higher and you pull back this is where it's going to find support okay if it cracks below this then this is a false break and it's actually pretty bearish
you're saying maybe it would have been better to buy. Well, look, I mean, I, you're just asking um, about method here, right? This is trying to help show you method, right? It doesn't matter the currency pair. It doesn't matter the market. I'm just talking about tactics. Okay. All right. Copper, last one. Copper, one of the best looking charts out there. We've pulled back like we thought we would from resistance, and we have support still lower. Okay, uh, it's not a lot lower. You know, given how we've fallen the last couple of weeks, you could get there pretty quickly. You know, what is this? 260, 250, 60. So, like, what is that like 3%? Something like that. Let's see, 260 minus 2.5060 equals divided by 2. No, 4 percent. So we're at 250. Oh, we're at 259.90 right now. So 59.90. That might be 3 percent. Okay, so not quite three and a half percent. So three and a half percent lower, I think, is where you get copper support. If we go to a four hour chart, you can see uh, that you would be able to draw yourself some channel stuff here. And pretty strong downtrend here because you're cracking this level. Ultimately, what you want to see is you want to see support on this. So over time, you might end up finding support on uh, on this at a later date, right? So while I'm looking towards the blue line for support, I I'm not quite sure where uh, where resistance is at this point. I mean, you have your obvious horizontal levels, like 263.65 is a pretty clean spot here, right? You can see all that. So that would be an area to think about um, a short position, okay? for copper, but I'm very wary of that, of doing that, because I have copper in a pretty big behavior change, um, you know, essentially establishing a new uptrend move with the with the move that we had last November, and then finding support on that line, okay, so I'm looking for support on the line again, but if it's higher, and you turn up now, it's actually stronger, and I don't want to be selling, hoping that I get 4% when I think that it's going a crap load higher. You see what I'm saying? This, by the way, is going to help time a huge Aussie long, in my opinion. All right. DXY. Russell, what do you think about DXY? Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of a disaster. With DXY at the moment. So remember, this is mostly Euro. I actually have a DXY chart over here, don't I? Mm-hmm. DXY. Here we go. I thought I had, oh, sorry. Here it is, wrong workspace, DXY. Okay, so daily chart. I mean, I'm not sure what else to say. This thing continues to uh, trade on this channel. Right, and like no matter how bullish the dollar supposedly is, okay? Um, 
no matter how bullish, this is log and this is arithmetic. But so no matter how bullish the dollar supposedly is, it's acting like crap. These rallies, so, you know, the overhang, um, just very slow momentum intraday, not being able to accelerate, not trading well on jobs, this and that. Essentially, you have this resistance line acting as resistance, right? And I mean, I can't really, it's kind of hard to be, uh, it's kind of hard to be bullish the dollar when you're at resistance, wouldn't you say? Or anything for that matter. So yeah, the dollar continues to trade at resistance. And case in point today, it's rolling over. Uh, I think it's probably negative on the week now. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it is. So um, yeah, it does not look good up here. And I think there's the significant risk of a broader breakdown at some point, right? I mean, we've been here a million times. Resistance, 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 resistance. Okay. I mean, your signal for like, you know, all systems go short the crap out of the dollar would be if you break the lower parallel down here, which is your support line. So that would be, um, that would be the, you know, the signal. Other than that, I'm not going to really worry about uh, what the Fed does. Uh, add the webinar registration online. I think, oh, you mean the uh, post it online? I will certainly post it online. Yes, you got it. No problem. Yep, yeah, we went through a bunch. Okay, so I'm wrapping it up there. Uh, thanks for attending, everybody. Have a great rest of your week, what's left of it, and weekend, of course. And get ready for next week's FOMC, whatever. Okay, they're going to raise rates. Super. Uh, it's 25 basis points, and we're still basically at zero. Um, so, you know, chew on that. All right. Take care, guys. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.